What is up, dippers, clippers, and sample flippers? Thanks for sitting down at the messy desk with me this week. Today, I want to continue our nose dive into the instruction manual of the Electron Octatrack Marcus Roman numeral 2 8 track dynamic performance sampler and all around musician aggravator. And my reason for this is uh, more than just pure masochism. I want to cover the absolute basics of sampling because while I think that other people have done videos on this topic and I'm sure have explained it rather well, I still get questions from students about how the hell do you get audio into this thing? Where does it go when you save it? How do you move it around? How the hell do I feel confident sampling on this thing? So I figured, okay, I'll go ahead and throw my sweaty, stinky, unwashed hat into the ring and try to help you out. Now, we have to do a little bit of manual reading on this one, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Octodad, already spent $1,350 on this device, or maybe a little less if I got it used. I don't have the money for archival history lessons to decipher this inscrutable nonsense. That's where your boy comes in. I got you. Don't worry about it. I've read it. My eyes have bled for you. I struggled for you. I mean, in that way, I guess I am like Jesus, right? I've struggled for you, you worship me, and you will continue to misrepresent everything I stand for after I die. Anyway, you don't have to worry about the manual because lucky for you, I've dived down the rabbit hole, I've pulled out all the rabbits, I've taken them out of all the magician's hats, and I feel absolutely confident that I can explain sampling to you while only making a few massive mistakes. So, how do we sample on the Octatrack? How does audio get handled on the Octatrack? Why is my music bad? We're gonna answer two out of those three today. So stick around to find out which. Let's talk about it. And here's the intro. And the intro's happening now. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about when we talk about sampling is these boys right here. And what these boys are, are the recording buffers. Now, the recording buffers are little capsules, little containers for audio that gets sampled into this thing. Each recording buffer is assigned to a specific track. So recording buffer one, recording one is for track one, two is for two, three is for three, four is for four, so on and so forth. When you sample into this thing, if you sample into track one, the audio is going to the recording buffer of recording buffer one. If you sample into track six, it's going to the recording buffer of track six. That will never change. You can sample a track from other tracks. So like if I'm in track seven here and I hold track one and hit record, I'm sampling onto track one right now, that's going to be in recording buffer one. It won't be in recording buffer seven, but if I am on track seven and I just hit record, it's sampling on track seven, it's going to be in the recording buffer of track seven. That is something that is unchangeable, irrevocable, inexorable, all the words they used on the back of the Twilight book to describe Bella's love for Edward. You can't change it. Where people get tripped up here is that you can assign recording buffers to different tracks. So like I could come to track three here and assign it recording buffer five. How does this make sense, right? The recording buffers are assigned to these tracks immutably. You shouldn't be able to assign them around. You're wrong, and I'll tell you why you're wrong, and you should feel bad for being wrong. I'm just kidding. You shouldn't feel bad for being wrong. Being wrong is how you learn. Here's why. Think of it like you deposit your money at a bank. You give your money to Wells Fargo, to Bank of America, to a third bank to complete the rule of three, and once your money's in there, it's yours to spend wherever you want right? You put your hard-earned money in there from the Emerald Mine, courtesy of Elon Musk, and now you're free to spend it on whatever you want. You can get Little Debbie's Donuts, you can get anime figures, you can get more hardware samplers than any man or woman should reasonably need. Your money is yours to spend wherever you want, even if it's coming from that central location, that, that bank. So think of the recording buffers like a bank. You put your sample in there, but once the sample is in there, take it wherever you want, right? I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, comment down below and I'll, I'll try to explain it further. It's the best analogy that I could think of while also making fun of Elon Musk a little bit. Now that you understand what recording buffers are, when we sample into this thing, depending on what track we're sampling into, that's where our audio is gonna go, it's where it'll always be. Let's talk about actually sampling, actually getting audio into this thing. Before we even get into the next bit of this video, there's a crucial bit of information that I forgot to deliver to you, which is that you need to turn on this setting, which is buried in the personalized menu. I don't understand why they made it this ridiculous, but you need to do it. Um, you need to go into project, then system, then personalize, and then go all the way down to record quick mode ran into this issue with a student. If you don't have record quick mode on, uh, sampling just won't really work 
at all in this way. I don't have a really grand explanation as to why. Just listen to your dad and do what I tell you and we won't have any problems. Okay, now uh, go to your room and finish watching this video. Goodbye. Off screen here, I have the Digitone, my trusty, trusty Digitone, battery powered, of course. Uh, check this video out. Before we even get into the nitty gritty of record setup pages and all that scary nonsense, we gotta talk about how do you wanna monitor what you're doing when you sample? You don't have to monitor at all, but it's generally a good idea to. So there's two ways, at least that I know of off the top of my head, to monitor what you're sampling. So one way is to come to the mixer and turn the gain of whatever relevant input pair you're using. So right now I'm using A of A and B because I'm too lazy to grab two cables and I turn up the direct for A and B You can hear that, and a problem you run into there, unfortunately, is that I'm only using A of A and B, and it's panned hard left. Now, the other way to do it, the way that I kind of prefer to do it, is to use a through machine. Now, if you're not familiar, a through machine is just a track that lets audio come into the Octatrack and can be processed by the Octatrack's effects and such, and they're very, very useful for processing the sounds of outboard gear. So I always have a through machine on my template anyway, so it's just the simplest, easiest way for me. If you don't use through machines regularly, maybe the direct input monitoring will work better for you. So if you have your through machine, you wanna make sure that you choose what source. I just have A and B and C and D chosen. So you need to choose between these two methods. Do you wanna do direct monitoring or do you wanna use a through machine? Worth noting that even if you use a through machine, it's not going to sample the effects that the through machine is putting on to your device is purely for monitoring because ultimately you're going to be sampling the raw input here. You're not gonna be sampling track five of your through machine. You're not sampling your through machine unless of course you're resampling. Hopefully I'm not getting too convoluted here. Let's, let's back it up a little bit. So let's say for simplicity's sake, you have decided to use a through machine because you already have one and it's fine and it's easy and you don't have to deal with the hard panning if you're just using a mono signal. Now what do you do? Well, there's some settings we have to suss out because it's the Octatrack and of course there's a thousand pages and a billion parameters and they all make my head hurt and they scare me and I'm sad. Don't worry, I'm here to be scared and sad with you. Let's go through them. They're actually not so bad once you kind of understand what each of their purposes is. So we have three recording buttons here, recording one, two, and three. And under them we have some lines of text, setup one, setup two, record edit. We are concerned with setup one at the moment. So we're gonna hit function and setup one and now we are in the settings for our recording. And this is crucial because this is telling the Octatrack, what do I want you to listen to? How long do I want you to listen to it for? How do I control the sampling? So like, how do I engage and disengage the sampling? And then some minor like playback settings. And it's really not so bad. Let's just break it down. I think by the end of it, it won't seem so daunting. I wanna start with NAB, NCD, and Source 3. Now these are the sources that you can pull from to sample. So you can sample the input of A and B, the input of C and D, or any sort of source for resampling here. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with nothing. So right now I would be sampling nothing. I have no source chosen. If I turn my A knob, we can see AB. What AB is, is input A and input B panned hard left and right, which will end up being a stereo file. After that, we have just A, so just mono A, which I think still ends up being a stereo file when you're done with it. I just think it's just sampling A. Correct me if I'm wrong there. B, same deal. And then A plus B. And what A plus B is, it's a still a stereo file, but it's summed so that if you're just using input A like I am today and you and you fiddle, it won't have that gross it's only in my left headphone, it's only in my right headphone. Hard panning effect. Now, of course, you can imagine C and D, same deal, same exact option. Now, source three is where the aux track gets really fun and interesting because you can resample track one, track two, track three, all the way through track eight. Of course, if track eight is your master, you're going to be resampling the entire master track. Main will do a similar thing, it's sampling the main outputs. And then you can also resample your Q output, which is something that I wanna try doing. I think that could be very interesting and I, I haven't tried doing that yet. So that's your sources. You just wanna tell the Octatrack what you're recording. If you have something plugged into AP, you turn on A and B. If you have something plugged into C and D, so on and so forth. The next thing that I'm concerned about is how are we engaging and disengaging sampling? And that is where this trig comes in. There's a few different modes. There's one, one, two, and hold. One is you press the recording button, it starts recording, and it's just gonna go until it stops or you hit the stop button, that's fine. Then there's one, two, which is you hit record, it's recording now, and it's going to record until you hit that button again. So start and stop. Okay, hold is exactly what it sounds like. 
you hold down the recording button, and when you take it off, it stops sampling. And so those are the three modes, the three methods that you can use to engage and disengage sampling, and they're gonna have different applications for different things. If you just wanna capture a really small bit of audio, maybe the hold is good for you. If you wanna sample you know, as long a thing as you can, probably just the one is fine. If you wanna sample a really tight bit, one and two, you know, I don't know. I usually default to one, two, just because I like being able to just stop it prematurely without stopping the entire sequencer. But your results may vary there. That's why there's multiple options is so there's a thousand use cases for this thing. Ultimately, it's gonna be up to you to decide which one works best for you. So that's the trig modes. We're moving right along to record length, R length. And that's just how long do you wanna record? Do you want it to record the max length that it possibly can, which is uh, 16 seconds, though you can, I believe, extend that, but I have never done it because I get scared. People say that there's some RAM memory issues that you can run into there. I don't know, comment down below telling me that I'm being ridiculous and that I should sample more, but 16 seconds has always been a fine amount of time for me. Or you can sample a certain number of sequencer steps, like 64, 63, all the way down to one. I wanna sample one step. And now I assume if you're recording a, a certain number of steps, the speed of that is gonna be dependent totally on your tempo, right? There's nothing about this specifically in the manual. It just says sequencer steps. But I have to imagine if you're working in 30 BPM, recording 64 steps is gonna take longer than 16 seconds, right? So bear in mind that if you set it to 64 steps, if it hits that 16 second mark before 64 steps, it will stop sampling. That's just the way that it works. And if that happens, you can always try to do that reserving more memory thing. Again, it's not something I'm very familiar with. I just wanna talk about the way that I've used this and the very basics of sampling for me. And then we have loop. Now loop confuses a lot of people, uh, myself included, because I just read the manual about it this morning to make sure that I didn't fuck up my explanation of this. Loop is once you've sampled your thing, do you want it to loop when you play it back? And why that's in the recording setup thing is kind of confusing to me because I always assumed that it meant do you want it to keep looping sampling? Does that make sense? Like once it's done sampling, start sampling again, right? Loop the sampling, but that's not what it means. So do you want it to loop after it's been sampled? I usually leave it on. It's never really affected me super much. So there we go. We're done with the first page and the first page is the big one. That's the one you're gonna need to get the very basic sampling down. Let's take a quick second because we've talked a lot and we've talked quickly about a lot of different terms and things. I wanna sit back for a second and we're gonna do an Okta review, okay? The recording buffers. Recording buffers are containers for our audio. They're assigned to these tracks irrevocably. If I sample into track one, it's gonna be in the recording buffer of track one, et cetera. We can then move those samples around wherever we want to we talked about the first recording setup page here. We have our sources, NAB, NCD, or source three, if we wanna resample. We have our recording length, which we can set to a certain number of sequencer steps, which I assume is going to be dependent on tempo, but again, correct me if I'm wrong, or just the max recording length possible. We have trig, which decides how sampling is engaged, whether we want it to be just one button press, a button press and another to stop it, or just holding it. And then we have loop, which is whether or not we want our sampled audio to loop playback. Do you see? It's not, it's not so bad. It's a lot, it's certainly a lot. You would rather have a button that just says sample, please. But you hopefully will come to understand as I switch menus here really quick, that these options are a good thing and not a bad thing. Because yes, they certainly raise the bar of work that you have to do to just get two chords into your Octatrack or whatever. But the flexibility that they give you for if you want to do live resampling, if you wanna do live looping with pickup machines, if you want to sample a very specific amount of time for some reason and kind of automate that process, it's very good for that. And those options are, are crucial. And what's more, I've talked about templates a lot. I'll put the video there. If you know that you have devices plugged into A and B and C and D all the time, you can make a template where A and B B, C and D, one, two, or whatever trick mode you like, and set these settings however you want, and then you don't have to futz with this setup every time. It's not like you have to enter this menu every time you sample. You can kind of set it and forget it, and then if you need to change it a little bit, you can come into the menu and you can change it, but I don't want you to see this menu and see this setup and get scared off, because this is a one-time setup with maybe a couple tweaks here and there if you need to. But ultimately, once you've got it set up, that's the hardest part. There kind of is just a one button sample. You just press the plus button or you press the relevant track and the plus button and you're sampling and you're doing great and <laughs> you're making great music and I'm so proud of you. So, you know, stick with it, 
Hang with me here. We only got a little bit more to cover. And by the end of it, dude, you're gonna be a sampling king. Be a sampling queen. If you're a non-binary, if you're a they, them like me, you're gonna be a royal liege of plunder phonics. My dude, which is non-binary, by the way. Let's talk about the second recording setup page because you fucking knew there had to be a second recording setup page, right? You knew that. This is the Electron Octatrack. Of course, there's a second recording setup page. So let's hit function and record two. Now we are in the recording setup page two. This one is very scary, right? What do all these letters mean, man? You got fin, you got fout, you got ab, you got curec, you got cuple, you got cide. I wanna make a cide, okay? I don't wanna learn what cide is. I wanna make a cide of my great music. Huh? Don't worry, I'll help you figure it out. Once you learn what these acronyms mean, it's really simple and it's not scary at all. So FN is fade in, F out is fade out, and the way that this applies audio fades in or out when you're sampling to avoid, you know, nasty clicky clackies, is you just apply a certain amount of like sequencer steps according to the Electron manual. Again, it doesn't specifically say this, but I assume that that is going to be dependent on the tempo that you're working in, because if you're working in 30 BPM, two steps is a lot longer than two steps in 160 BPM, right? So just be cognizant of that. Uh, it suggested using like the lowest setting possible to just get a very slight audio fade. If you just want to avoid clicks and clacks, just use a very slight fade and then you should be good. But if you want really that attack, that slow attack fade, uh, you can use higher values. Q rec and Q playback, we will get to in a minute. A, B and C, D are only relevant to pickup machines apparently. And that is for monitoring of them, I suppose. I'm still kind of unclear on it. The manual uh, confuses me. So comment down below and tell me if you use these two monitoring options here and how they are or are not useful to you. Now, quantized recording is mega super duper useful. Quantized recording rules, and I'll tell you why. Let's say you have a guitar and you want to record a guitar sample, but you don't want to hit record and then you got to pick up your guitar. Or you got to reach over your guitar, hit record. Then there's all that silence. Then you start recording and you got to trim the sample. Ugh, so annoying, right? Especially if you're trying to record a sample along with a backing track or whatever else you have going on. What quantized recording allows you to do is exactly what it sounds like, which is quantize the recording to a set of parameters, basically. Do you want it to start recording only when the pattern resets? Very useful. Do you want it to record only to one step, two step, three steps? You know, whatever you want, basically. You can have it <laughs> quantized record up to 256 steps. So if you really want to wait around, it's really useful for live sampling, really useful for live looping, especially if you're using a guitar and you don't have a foot switch and you don't want to try to fuck with using a foot switch with this because I honestly can't imagine what that setup process is like. Quantized recording is crucial for having precise timing for resampling. If you are resampling your master, you want it to be perfectly in time, right? You want it to resample right when the pattern length comes back around. So let's just show you exactly how it works. I'm gonna hit play, and now I'm gonna hit the record button. And you'll see it's not recording. Let's wait for the sequencer to come back around. Two, three, four, and now it's recording. And so that's mega super duper useful. Now. A word of caution here. If you are using different scales on your tracks, if one track is playing at half speed, and so you need to have your master be 128 steps rather than 64, the recording is going to wait until the master sequencer resets. So it's gonna wait 128 steps to reset. So you might be confused wondering why after four bars of your normal sequencer speed, it's not sampling. That's why, because it's waiting for the master to reset. So if you have your master set to infinite and you have quantized recording to pattern length, it will never sample. So word of warning there, very useful, but very easy to be like, what the hell's going on about that? Now, quantized playback. This is something I don't understand. I've read the manual seven times, seven times I've put my eyes cartoon-like, they've stuck out of my head and sweeped all over the page and I've tried to understand it, I've tried to take in the information it's giving me and it making no sense to me. So if you understand exactly what quantized playback means, comment down below and make me look like a fool because all that quantized playback has ever done for me, if I turn it on, specifically to pattern length, is screw up how slices work for me because all I know about this is that if you have quantized pattern length on and you then slice a sample, it won't let you play your slices except for when the pattern starts. And 
that really screwed me up during a beat from scratch video. And it took me like 30 minutes to figure out what was going on and it made me mega mad. It threw off my groove for the rest of the video and it made me very, very big boy angry. So I haven't touched it since. So if you have a use for quantized playback that is super crucial to your setup and you wanna advocate for that, please do down in the comments. I don't understand it, it scares me. Teach me maybe. So there we go, all the recording setup stuff. You got it now. You got it, dude. You made it through and I'm so proud of you because it's a lot of shit to get through. But you've done it and now you're stronger. You ate your Wheaties, you got your big musclies now. And now I want you to just slam some samples into this thing and start making music because that's what we're here for. Now, I wanna touch on something briefly and I don't wanna go super deep into this because one, I'm not super well versed in using them. Two, this video is already gonna be kind of long and I don't want it to be super long. I want this to be an introduction to sampling, not a comprehensive guide to sampling by any means. And three, I'm tired and I don't wanna. So fight me about it, dude. I'm my own boss now, according to the United States government. So I'll have to do what you tell me, but I will though. I'm a people pleaser to the end. So we've talked about using different modes to engage sampling, right? And the, the quantized recording mode is really nice for getting those synchronized loops if we're resampling. Now, all that button pushing, all that remembering to hit a button and hit a button again and start and stop, that's too much work. I'm a lazy millennial. I'm killing the housing industry. I eat avocado toast and hate boomers. I don't wanna do it. So can you do it for me? Yes, the Octatrack can do it for you. You do have to do a little setup, but the Octatrack can and will do it for you. That is achieved by using what are called recorder trigs. These scared me for a long time because these trigs here and these trigs here are scary enough, okay? Telling me that there are even more trigs that I have to worry about made my big fat head hurt. But don't worry, now you have me. I didn't have me, I mean, I. I had me, but in like the bad, I'm trapped in my human body prison way and I can't escape my own mind and not in the cool like, oh, my Octodad's got me and he's gonna take care of me kind of way. So hopefully me being there for you is a little bit better than me being there for me because me being there for me sometimes is torturous. Let's talk about very briefly how to set this up. If you are in your recording setup menu and you engage record mode, you can place recorder trigs. And what recorder trigs do is engage sampling for you. So I have a recorder trig here. If I hit play, it's sampling now. Look at that, that's awesome. You need to choose what sources are being sampled on your recorder trig. If you hold it, you'll see that these three buttons are lit up here. You can engage or disengage certain sources to be recorded. So if I wanna only record AB, I'll do that. If I wanna only record CD, I'll do that. This is great, especially if you have set up your quantized record to your pattern length. Having a recorder trig is great because you can set this up, you hit play and it starts sampling right away and it's going to sample and that's great. Uh, and you can just kind of hang out and vibe and relax. And then now every time that this loops around, it's gonna sample. And at any point you can just come in here really quick and take off that recorder trig. Now there's some additional fanciness you can do with one shot recording trigs, which is basically saying sample and then stop sampling after that, don't sample again. I don't wanna dig super far into that. EasyBot, my fast friend and comrade has a great video about resampling, uh, which I've plugged in the past and I will plug again, uh, that uses one shot recording trigs to great effect. I'm gonna, it's gonna be right up there. My finger's gonna be, ooh, what a good video, Maddie. Good job on that video. Go watch that, go comment, go subscribe, go give him love, ding that bell for notifications, smash that like button, and you know, let him feel the Octodad love, although I'm sure our fan bases are like a, uh... <laughs> although I'm sure our fan bases are like a COVID super spreader event, germs intermingling everywhere, everybody knows each other, everyone's hugging and kissing and everybody's coughing weirdly, and why is everyone coughing, that's weird, and Oh man, now we all gotta go get things shoved up our nose. Anyway, that's just a quick way to do some automated sampling. Uh, for a more comprehensive guide, go watch his video, he'll explain it. This is something I didn't mention at the beginning of the video. When you choose your source, whether it's A, B, or C, D, there are going to be different buttons that you need to press to actually engage the sampling for those things. So if it's A, B, you'll see right here, that's above recording one, that's what you need to press. If it's C, D, and it's above record two, that's what you need to press. If you're recording the master or anything internally, record three is what you need to press. 
Simple as that, easy to remember. Sometimes that can trip me up. I'll be like, wait, why is it not working? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong source button. Also worth noting, if you just hit record uh, or whatever relevant record button you wanna hit, you can see I'm hitting all three to show you that that works. It will sample to whatever track you're focused on. So if I'm on six, it'll be six. If I'm on three, it'll be three. If I'm on two, it'll be two. And you can see that these are sampling at the same time. So that's exciting. You can sample multiple tracks at the same time, which is fun and cool and great and can be used to great effect if you're a smart and good musician. We all know I'm neither of those things, but you guys are. So take that and do something cool with it. Another way to sample is to hold the track button down and hit whatever sample button you want. And so now you can see I'm focused on track two, but track seven is recording. Similarly, I'm focused on track six, but now track three is recording because I held track three down. So this is just different ways to engage sampling that are going to work in different circumstances depending on what you're doing. And there's various use cases for why you might wanna do that. Like for instance, if I'm resampling the output of track six into track one here, I can go here, sample on track one, and then start messing with the parameters of track six or I'm on seven now, but you get the idea so that I can print those effects to audio. So that kind of gives you flexibility there. Similarly, if you just wanna be you know, hands off and kind of simple, just go to the track you wanna sample onto, hit the record button, and you're good as gravy. So as I've said, we've done a lot of talking, we've done a lot of explaining of parameters and menus and all that stuff. That's great, but how easy is it to listen to me explain all this stuff to you and then you sit down at your Octatrack and it doesn't work and you go, ah, oh, fuck. I hate when that happens. So let's walk through it together. We have all these disparate pieces, right? Let's take them and let's plug them human centipede style into each other. And uh, we're gonna shit some audio down the throat of the recording buffer of the Octatrack. I'm sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> so let's do it. Let's just walk through this together from scratch really quick. And then I'll get out of your hair and you can go make music, okay? We are on track one. That's where I wanna sample into. Why? Because I decided that. We're gonna check our recording setups really quick. Let's turn off all these settings, right? Let's just make it totally not what I would normally do. It's totally blank. Right now, if I sample, nothing is going to get picked up because I have no source chosen. I have my digitone over here, which is coming into input A. So I'm gonna come to my source and turn on A. How long do I wanna record? the max length is fine with me. What method do I wanna to use to engage the sample? I'm gonna do one, two, so I can hit start and stop just for simplicity's sake. Do I want the stuff that I sample to loop playback once it's sampled? Sure, why not? Let's check page two. Do I wanna do some fade in? Let's do a very slight fade in and a very slight fade out. Quantize recording, I don't need it. Quantize playback, I don't want it. A, B, and C, D, not relevant because we're not using a pickup machine. Okay. Our setup is done. I'm gonna be like Dora the Explorer. I want a sample. Where's the record button? Which record button do I press? That's right. It's the A, B, record one button. So I'm gonna hit the record one button. We can see the plus that it's sampling. Now I'm gonna start noodling. Now I'm gonna hit again to stop. Let's go to the audio editor. And there it is. I'm gonna trim it a little bit so that we can just hear it. And we got a sample in. Just for the sake of being comprehensive, let's pull out this cable here, move some of these other fucking cables, and let's plug it into C for C and D. Now, what do we need to change? That's right. We need to change our recording source. So I'm gonna put it to C. Let's do it again. Okay. Uh-oh. There's no audio. What did I do wrong? I pressed the wrong button. And I'd like to pretend that that was instructional, but it wasn't. It was just me making a mistake that I make all the time. So there you go. If you've made a mistake like that, uh, if you are sampling and you're not getting audio in, ask yourself, did I press the right button? Because I sure as shit didn't. Let's do it here. We can even do it from the audio menu. So let's just hit record, it's recording. We see the audio. Great, I pressed the right button and we did it. Now to be ultra super mega comprehensive, let's do some internal resampling. What do I need to change? 
you're right. I need to change my recording source. So let's come back into here, turn off C, turn on, let's say I wanna sample the output of track five. Track five is my through machine. So it's going to be picking up what's coming through my through machine. Let's maybe apply something to this through machine here, like some reverb. I don't know why I'm reaching over here. Sounds great and ambient and great. You can see the light lighting up there. So let's come here, come into the audio editor, hit record. Stop again, let's listen. And you can hear that it picked up the effects as well. And that's the beauty of resampling internally. And so there you go. Now you have your sample. You might wanna say, okay, I got it, I good. I'm gonna go make music, fuck you. Never needed you for anything, dad. Can I have some money before I go, please? Money, please. Yes, of course you can have some money. I want you to be taken care of and loved, but please don't go yet because there's one more thing I have to tell you. You have this sample here. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. You love it so, so fucking much. It's, it's just, it's a masterpiece, right? The Octatrack doesn't give a fuck about that. The Octatrack doesn't care about your little tiny precious songs. Oh, is it a good song? Is it a good song? I don't give a shit. I'm gonna throw it in the trash if you don't save it. I'm a mean person. So right now our sample is held in our recording buffer. We have to save it because if we don't save it and we go oh, and turn off the power, it's gone forever. And I've learned this the hard way. Everyone who's used the Octatrack has learned this the hard way. Even now, after I give you this long lecture about it, you will forget and you will lose your Tiny Tim sample, your Tiny Tim remix that you worked so hard on with your buddy Andrew, and it will haunt you for the rest of your days. So heed my warning, save your samples. There's a couple ways you can do this. Let's go over them super quick and then we can go to our soccer game, drink some Capri Suns and have a great time. Let's go to our audio editor, which is the way that I did this for years. And we wanna go to file and go save and assign sample. You can rename it whatever you want. I'm gonna rename it, yuz. And I'm gonna hit save, assign to free flex. And now we can come down to our free flex track, yuz, flex slot, I should say. And now if we come to the audio editor, we can see yuz is there. Another way to do it, which is more faster and so it's more better, is this last button here, record edit. If I hit function and record edit, I can save this recording. So let's do that. Save this recording, rename it, jalop, save it, assign to FreeFlex. It's assigned to Flex 6. Let's go down there, jalop, and jalop, there it is. That's Jennifer Lopez. That was on accident. But uh, what's up, Jennifer Lopez? You wanna come make music? Come to the studio, see what happens, you know? I got a wife, but I think she might be into it. Someone reach out to Jennifer Lopez's management for me. Thank you. That's the biggest crucial thing with this is you gotta save your samples. If you don't, they will be cleared from the audio buffers when you turn off your device and you will be very sad. And I don't want that for you. Don't make the mistakes of your father. Grow and develop and learn and remember these things. Honestly, you should put a piece of duct tape right here that says like SYS, save your samples, you know? Cause God, I forget all the time and it kills me. That's the basics of sampling. And this video is probably gonna be kind of long because I'm long-winded and I like to cover use case scenarios and I'm rambly and I'm certainly no easy bot when it comes to brevity. But what I hope is that when you come out of this, you will feel like you understand what's going on here. And you feel like maybe it's a little more conquerable. It doesn't feel so insurmountable. That's what I want. I want you to be able to come to the Octatrack, say, hey man, I just gotta set up this recording setup menu once, maybe twice, and then I'll save it as a template and I can come back and edit it as necessary depending on what I'm sampling. But ultimately it can be kind of a set and forget thing. And then whenever you see a light being lit up, you know that's the button I need to sample under. And you'll be great and awesome and perfect and you'll make great music and I wanna hear it. So that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you don't mind me taking a week sabbatical. School really burnt me out and my brain hurts and I'm not ready to go back. So taking a week off to just kind of spend time with my family, spend time with my friends, virtually of course, 
and just fall headfirst into multiple JRPGs was a nice restorative experience and gave me time to put in the proper research for this video and make sure that I knew what I was talking about because I don't want to fuck this up. I will be back next week with a new video. Not sure what the topic is going to be. Probably going to throw it to my patrons for them to decide. A link down there if you're interested. I sometimes just throw a poll up on Patreon and let my patrons decide what the next video will be. So if you want to have a role in deciding that, go ahead and go down there and, and check that out. Got some sample packs there for you as well. I don't know, man. Should I do like the thing that other YouTubers do? Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Smash that like button. Ding the bell for notifications. Tell your mom about me. Tell your parents that you love me and that it's real and that I'm not a cult leader and that I'm a thought leader, actually, and that they just don't understand the high-level ideas that I'm selling to you. I don't know, man. I want to thank you so much for watching and supporting and all the love that you guys give this channel. It really means the world to me. Uh, the growth of this channel has blown my mind and continues to blow my mind. So I hope to keep making good content for you. I hope you keep watching and I hope that I will keep making people angry with my unnecessary injections of uh, Elon Musk hatred. So one last time, I want to thank you so much for watching. My name's Daniel. This is The Messy Desk and I love you more than I love seeing audio come into this audio editor, letting me know I've sampled correctly. I'll see you next week. Peace.